no food here. Don't panic by, they said. District Health Boards says community vaccination centres, GPs and pharmacies were all open today. Just over a quarter of Aucklanders are fully vaccinated against COVID, with 44% having at least some level of protection. New South Wales has set another record for daily COVID cases, with 681 new infections in the past 24 hours. Meanwhile, the police have been cracking down on rule breakers. Um. I came to the supermarket to get some groceries. We were out of nappies and milk, eggs, bread, vegetables. You know, it's just the usual shop. <laughs> and um, I am flabbergasted at how empty the shelves were. I arrived here at 20 past eight queued for 20 minutes to get into the store, got into the store, found that the shelves were bare and 5% of the usual amount of produce in the produce area and about 5% of the usual meat. It was very difficult to find things that I thought my family would eat and then over the loudspeaker they said we're closing at nine o'clock tonight not the usual ten o'clock so please make your way to the counter and we will try to serve as many of you as possible. There were children looking in rubbish bins in South Auckland. I think, oh, it was, uh, Lord. like he actually said that broke his heart. This was this lockdown, yeah. uh, like three weeks ago. He said this. Yeah. So you know, the property is still there. Mm. So, although you, may, if you don't see it outside, it's within the homes. It's well, yeah, I suppose it's very hidden in a lockdown, isn't it? That's pretty dumb. Yeah, so that yeah. was a motivation, I think, for him and everyone. Is like, you know, you just keep going when you know that. Yeah, what yeah we've got to get, we've got to look after our yeah. kids. Yeah. Mm. Look, you know, I think food is is really um, the survival kit for our people. What you doing, Corey? Nice. What you doing, Falcon? Cleaning. Car So I went down the road and the line was crazily long. Um, so I put it off for a day and then booked in to my doctor, managed to get the test done. It was more of an inconvenience because we were already isolating and I've been vaccinated. It took 24 hours to get results back. Um, which is quicker than my friends who are still waiting for their results. They're still isolating. Mm. Um, which for them may not have been hard because they can't go to the supermarket. <clears throat> I'm not feeling very good today. <clears throat> I've got um, a pretty nasty flu and um, <clears throat> I learnt that I have been in a location of interest I've just had my COVID test. <clears throat> ah. <clears throat> Tell me about lockdown. What does it mean? It means that that people can't go out and they have to stay at home. And if anybody catches a cold, they have to go to hospital ASP ASP E ASP Stat. Right away. Just right away. Yeah. Oh, I just couldn't stop thinking about these families because they yeah. were just kept consistently messaging 
asking for support and there was some there were just so many you get to try and get to the bottom of the list and then you go to the top there are just more coming in more coming in and I could feel their anxiety you know and, and the thing is is that as well as we're having to answer to the church communities as well as um Mm. families within the community but there's also those ones who are in isolation and MIQ yeah. so we're also answering to those families as well and you can imagine uh, the stress levels for those families is to yeah. a complete height because um, they can't go out and do their own shopping or anything like that so um really it's us having to accommodate their needs mm -hmm. and basically just get the things that they need because these um not just individual families but families with children mm -hmm. and, and you've got six you know pacific families they multiply <laughs> <laughs> Tony fell over and uh, bruised my leg pretty badly. Basically, we're running low on groceries and um, I'm hoping that the results will come through soon. So last year, Tim was in Australia. I was living the first lockdown with my parents which living with your parents you know they were wonderful but um, I was with them for like what were we two months or something mm. um trying to do uni out of Auckland which was tricky but then the lockdown last year at Auckland I was living by myself for like two three weeks which was really really rough so in comparison this time around like I've got a beautiful like neighbors we've got I've got my partner so it seems like a breeze there's over 200 people with positive confirmed cases and I know there's a lot of testing going on because there's hundreds of sites of interest and of people who have come into contact with people who have COVID so it's possible that we've totally lost containment. The full puzzle picture I've drawn for the Neighbourly website to keep all us lockdown folk uh, entertained. I think it's been very well received. People have given me lots of positive feedback about the last week puzzles. And I love drawing cartoons. And I've had a lot of time on my hands. And I'm just very happy to um, contribute something to a uh, a local website. Stoked. Just got the phone call. Negative. <laughs> ah. Real happy. Can go grocery shopping now. The social issues around why food is needed for these families, it does come down to lack of employment, lack of work. It's the same thing, it's the same thing that we saw from the beginning. The problem is, is that if it's not um, MIQ related, a lot of um, a lot of it is around the lack of finances. Um, yeah. You know, we have some of these families where there is only one income earner. 
Um, and and they're not even able to work. And they're not able to work yeah. or they don't even qualify for a wage subsidy. Um, but, oh, really? You know, oh, there's... <clears throat> because some of them um, don't meet the criteria. But then, of course, you have um, external supports, places such as WINS. Um, Salvation Army were yeah. also out there, um, you know, taking medication to these families yeah. as well. Wow. The Uber Med tanks. Yes. space. Allahu Akbar ran through a West Auckland supermarket this afternoon, stabbing people before he was shot dead. <laughs> it was a horrifying experience that came as a complete shock. Six people were injured in the attack, three of them critically. The Prime Minister called the man a violent extremist who was ISIS-inspired. The attack happened in West Auckland at the Kildown supermarket in the Linwall shopping complex. Mike McRoberts has the story. The unmistakable sound of fear shoppers fleeing for their lives as emergency vehicles rush to the scene. And then there's this random guy, he just went Allah Wakbar and started stabbing. There's just two ladies, two ladies in front of me, he just went and started stabbing. And they went Allah Wakbar, Allah Wakbar. And then I just realized after that, oh my God, I have to run. got my appointment to go and get my number two jab my appointment time is 1 30 it's now 12 40 and I thought maybe I should probably come a few minutes early in case there's a queue there is a queue of easily 500 cars here <laughs> so I probably should have packed my dinner Late last night I got a text message from the, co uh, the vaccine centre saying you need to come in your car, you need to be wearing a mask, you need to have another adult driver with you and you can't have any children with you under the age of 12. Which is hard to achieve when you're in your bubble in lockdown level 4 and our children are young. So uh, they said on this occasion I could come on my own. Um, I don't have to have another driver with me. So. Oh gosh, I'm real glad that I don't have my kids with me in the car today because this queue is insane. I feel like my family is a little bit safer. Take your face covering. 
For anyone 12 or over, it's mandatory to wear a face covering when accessing necessities like groceries and medical care. You should take one with you and wear it whenever you leave home. Remember to respect those who can't wear one due to a health condition. Let's walk along this party! <laughs> panic buying, anxiety, racism, all of those things. And so it was reasonable to expect that if the next pandemic was a severe one, we would see uh, exactly all of those things, in, in which we did. And you drilled down, as they say, into vaccine hesitancy, for example. What did you find? To, to put it really simply, we, we're identifying in our research and other people as well, three groups of people. The overwhelmingly biggest group are the people that are okay getting vaccinated. My dad's a blue baby with his friend, uh, looking for food and food and food again. It's been a really hectic uh, couple of weeks. I think this week, though, I must admit, it has there has been a um, not a decrease in referrals. But I think just the anxiety of it all has, has settled, has settled down now. All kinds of goodies going on in there. Buradal, I'm going to make some dosa. And then here, just managed to achieve oh, a whole lot of great groceries. Look at that, you can get sushi. Even during lockdown, sushi's still a thing, that's still happening. A newspaper, got a bunch of corn to feed the birds at the park and got some seeds in there for them as well and there's a good music vibe going on here really cool um, oh, I forgot about the dumplings not the potatoes I forgot about the potatoes not the dumplings not the dumplings we managed to burn them both yeah. Yeah. Hate being in level four lockdown and relying on our own cooking skills. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. <laughs>